Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Diecast Emporium. We are going big today, and the reason is we're going to be taking a look at one of the largest mining trucks in the world in 150th scale. This is the large box that you see in front of you, and my camera only zooms out to 0.6%, so that's not going to be a problem once we get this model out of the box. But in terms of showing you how large the box is, here is a 150th scale CAT D11. There you go. That should give you a size comparison of just how massive the box is for this CAT 798AC. So let's get on with it, shall we? So this is part of the Highline series, as I've said before. Uh, it is item number 85671. This is one of two recent CAT electric drive or AC mining trucks that have come out. We had the 794 recently, and this is its big brother, the 798. All right, let's get this thing open. It opens up just the same way that any other um, Highline Series model opens. The difference is, and honestly, it is a bit of poetic symmetry, if you ask me. It's a dump truck, and the best way to get this out of the box is literally to dump it out. That's what we're gonna do. I apologize for the camera shaking. So doing that shows us that it is in two styrofoam formers. So we're gonna pull those off momentarily. You do have to cut the tapes here on both sides, which I've already done. So there's the top portion off. And we'll flip it over and do the bottom portion. Here we go. And with that, you can see what we have inside. So, Diecast Masters 150th scale Highline Series Cat 798 AC mining truck. As I've said a few times already, item number 85671 for reference. That's what you need to know. 150th scale. There's a picture of the real machine hard at work. Sides of the tin say the same thing, so we're not even going to bother. Diecast Masters Real Replicas, Highline Series, and the item number. On the back, there is another picture of the machine parked. I would presume waiting to be loaded by a shovel. Here are some overall machine dimensions and specifications details. Hopefully you can make those out. I'll bring it in as close as I can without cutting it off on the screen. All right, let's continue the unboxing. So as I said, this is one of the largest mining trucks in the world. It's a 410 capacity ton truck. It does feature an electric drive engine and powertrain, thus the AC, and Cat pioneered that in, uh, I believe it was the 795, almost a decade ago. Amazing how fast time goes. This truck is powered by a Cat C175-16 engine, which puts out a whopping 3,500 horsepower. Boy, I'd love to have some of that in my streetcar. Good lord. Wouldn't be late for anything. And this truck, when it was being designed by Caterpillar, what they really wanted to do is make sure that the operator was not only comfortable, but that he had as much visibility around the cab as they possibly could. So that's why they focused heavily on high visibility and high ergonomics inside the operator's cab. First thing in the box we have the Diecast Masters Caterpillar catalog. You've seen this before. This has all the current range of models. Next, we have a single sheet of instructions which tells you how to open the operator door and put the operator figure inside if you want to do that. Next, we have the pointer tool, two wheel chocks, and the operator figure. Last but not least, we have our truck sitting very snugly inside. Now, I recommend leaving this plastic piece in and using that to lift the truck straight out of the box. Just like that. And then when you're done, put the plastic piece back in the box. All right, we're going to take just a short break. When we come back, we'll have this centered in the screen. We'll have all this stuff out of the way, and we can begin the review. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for sticking with me. Let's put the wheel chocks on. Again, this is optional assembly, and you can put them on any way you want. I like to put them on like this, which may technically not be accurate or correct, but that's the way I like to do it. You put them on like here, drop them both in, 
and they should fit no problem. The only issue is that uh, there's just enough space for them, so you gotta got to be a little bit careful on how you do this. So we'll put one in on the other side, or you know what I should do is I should put them together and then drop them in. Let's see if that works. The wheel chocks themselves are a different shade of yellow. There we go. That seemed to work pretty well. Perfect. They're a different shade of yellow. They're a little bit brighter, obviously, than the cat yellow. Here is the operator figure that we all know as Bob. You guys have seen him a million times. If you want to, you can place them inside the cab. To do that, you'll need to remove this plastic band around the cab of the truck. And that is there simply to protect the doors from opening during shipping. So let's get our pointer tool out of the way. See if we can get this door open and put our figure behind the wheel. There we go. Door is open. Drop our operator figure behind the wheel. Tell them to work, work, work. We won't give them a break for years on end. There we go. And now he's behind the wheel and inside the cab. Okay, let's start out with the details and decals on this truck. You can see it's just a monster. That is probably one of the most attractive aspects of picking up a scale model of this size. You can see 798 with the modern hex, AC underneath it. There is a red chevron decal right here. Lights painted throughout. Um, you can see a little bit of an orange paint up on top of this tank. Over here you have cat. There's cat on the side of the door. 798 AC. And I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but here's a touch that I really enjoy a lot. So this little device up here, which reads out 000 in red, that's known as a load indicator. And it's angled off to the side because if this was backed up being, loading by, being loaded by a large shovel or an electric rope shovel in the mine, it's actually angled off to where the operator of that shovel could see how close the truck is to being at capacity. So I like that a lot. The other thing I'd like to mention at this point is, would you guys be interested in paying a little bit more um, if the load indicator actually was functional, if it was full integrated? So if you were loading this, it would actually give you a digital readout to see how much is in the back of the truck. I have no idea if that's something any die-cast scale model manufacturer has ever considered. That's just an idea I came up with. I think it would be super cool, but of course, since it is electronic, it would add a significant amount of more money to the price of the model. Back to the details. You can see all of the wheel details, the lug details inside the wheels, wrapped in some pretty high grade rubber. Mud flaps are rubber and they are flexible, which I like quite a lot. Moving towards the front of the truck, there are numerous staircases which fold down. Access stairs here, which fold down as well. And if you look up here, there's a small swinging open section uh, on the very top. You can see that there. So you climb up here, climb these stairs, open that gate up, shut that, walk around the catwalk here, and that's how you would access the cab. So certainly you need to eat your Wheaties this morning if you're going to be an operator of a large mining truck. Move this back up. There's your grill, some more lights. Moving over here. By the way, these are not lights. These are your lights, and your lights are down here, too. Over here, we have the radial grid, which is one of the electrical components on this truck. Another readout on this side of the machine. So, for example, it's being loaded from this side. You can see it. Exhaust. This is etched through on the radial grid. Again, looks fantastic. Let me lift up the dump box for just a minute. Taking a look on top. You can see the different electrical cabinets and such, the etched through walkway. And if you wanted to, although it can be, let's be honest, pretty finicky on these mining trucks to actually get this engine hatch to open, but you can pop this engine hatch to open. And there we go, we got it. It will move back to there. And then you can see the engine detail inside. Again, hard to pick up on camera, but it is there with several different engine components painted underneath. And it just snaps closed as such. 
All right, let's take a look at the dump box and how large that is. Here's a top-down view. It is a, it appears to be anyway, a mix of die cast, predominantly die cast. This is die cast. This feels like it might be some plastic at the end. Uh, but the color match is extremely good. You can see how large it is. And to give you yet another example of how large this truck is, I have gone the extra mile, check this out, and brought out the same D11 that I showed you during the unboxing. Look at this, guys. A D11 in 150th scale will fit in the back of this dump truck. How cool is that? All right, before we end the video, we've got a little bit more fun. We got a little bit more functionality to show you. Obviously, the wheels will roll freely. It steers, and it's a pretty significant notched mechanism, meaning that when you crank this thing, it's going to hold in that direction. It's not going anywhere. Told you about the opening doors for the engine hatch and to the cab of the operator seat. We do have working suspension. You can see the travel that's happening there. You have metal rock deflectors, which, as its name would imply, keeps rocks and material from getting jammed up between the tandems and the rear. Already showed you the folding access ladders as well. So that only leaves one thing. Let's check out the dumping functionality. Happy to report on here. The truck dumps very, very well to an acceptable height. You can see that there are one, two, three stages without me forcing anything. There could very well be another stage of cylinder, but this is where we meet some pretty significant friction, and I'm not going to force it any farther than that. You should have no issue getting all of your material out, even at this angle, which again is better than average. So that concludes this review of the Diecast Masters Highline Series Caterpillar 798 AC mining truck in 1 to 50 scale. A fantastic addition to anyone's large mining collection or Caterpillar collection. At the time that I am filming this review, these models are available from your favorite Diecast Masters distributor or dealership, and they retail for around $300 US. Again, I think that's pretty good value considering the size of this model, the detail, the functionality, and the amount of metal content. That's pretty reasonable. Thank you all again so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, be well. I'll see you in the next review.